They made cuts in the top of her head and then cuts out her tongue. A father kills his two and a half year old son just to be blessed in kind of way. The bad man came and he took you. In the bush. And then what happened? He cut, he cut me. Uh, depending on what the witch doctor thinks will work. Some of them just drain blood, others just cut the throats off. Others just cut their genitals if it's a, it's a boy. If you want your factory to be productive, to make money, then you must sacrifice a child or a human being. Was this one of the men who attacked you? Yes. Yes? This man? Yes. Yeah, I called you very fast because one of the men who kidnapped Alan is right there. I feel pain inside because my friend was murdered. It's total horror. Child sacrifice is real. It's a reality. This is Kampala, capital of Uganda, a developing country with a growing economy, but very much a country that's still struggling with problems such as poverty and HIV. And there also remains a widespread belief in spirits and traditional healers. People can receive treatment for a wide variety of complaints, provided they can pay. It all seems innocent enough, but looks can be deceiving. Each year, hundreds of children disappear in Uganda, and each year, more and more cases of so-called child sacrifice emerge. Believers hope child sacrifice is the doorway to prosperity, luck and happiness. Alan is 10. He was offered up as a child sacrifice, but miraculously survived. Shall I carry one? He lives with his father in the village Busolo. One afternoon, when Alan was seven years old, he arrived home from school and went to look for yes. fruit in the forest. What's your bet? It was then that he was attacked by two men and horrifically beaten. Alan was kidnapped when he went to fetch fruit. They cut him. They cut him even on his neck. Alan miraculously survived the attack. He was taken to hospital and spent 14 days in a coma. He knew exactly who did it. The two men appear to have been neighbours of Alan's. They were arrested, but later freed without charge. According to the father of Alan, their escape was the result of corruption. He is still deeply angry, but above all, he is simply concerned for his son. I no longer let Alan out with just anyone, and he isn't allowed out of the house without letting me know where he's going. If he does go anywhere, someone goes along with him. He's never alone. I take him to school. I know he's safe. To achieve happiness, or to avert unhappiness, blood must flow. This superstition of some Ugandans fuels these horrific practices. Children are considered the best sacrifice because they are perceived as pure. Body parts are cut off and buried. Blood of the child is mixed with drugs to propitiate the spirits. These practices are carried out by so-called witch doctors, medicine men who earn big money. Peter Sawakiyanga sits on the board of the KMPZ Child Care Ministries, an organization dedicated to putting an end to these terrifying practices. Good afternoon. Hey, it's good afternoon, my brother. How are you doing? Johan. Johan, Peter is my name. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. 
it is a big problem which has uh, grown bigger in these years because people believe uh, now that when you sacrifice a child you get wealth, you get uh, protection of some kind, you get um, uh, wealth and unfortunately this is done under such secrecy that you probably don't get to know how many children are killed without knowing. It's unclear what the true scale of the problem might be, but Peter now has cases of child sacrifice numbering in the hundreds. This is a child sacrifice case. They cut off his ears, cut off his uh, uh, drained blood out of him. This one was uh, killed by a man. They found a man holding the head of a child. Fauzia was murdered just a few months ago here in the interior of Uganda. Her blood and body parts were included in a sacrifice. Fauzia was five. The killer is still out there and the children are terrified. There was a lot of fear. Parents started escorting their children to school they were escorting them to, to fetch water and even when they were collecting what? Firewood. For me, I'm fear because the suspects are on this village. They can kill another people. She pierced her ears after uh, her friend was killed so that uh, she becomes impure for sacrifice. All of them pierce their ears so that they can be safe. The children who discovered their classmate Fauzia are still terrified of the spot where they found her, one morning lying in the doorway. Her grandmother, with whom she lived, was also murdered, hidden behind the house, probably killed because she was an eyewitness. This is the place where those children found yeah. their friend dead, yeah, five-year-old. Yeah, this is uh, where the girl was staying with her grandmother. Well, what, what, what did you see? She lay there in a pool of her blood. Then we called our parents. They began to cry. We were also crying very loudly. Or were there also body parts missing? Yes, yeah, she was cut in the head. They drained the blood out of her body. Uh, and then uh, they cut the body. They found the, uh, the liver and the heart missing as well. I feel pain inside because my friend was murdered. After the murder, the police action was immediate. A sniffer dog ran directly from the scene to the house of a shaman. Also, in the house of his assistant, clothing was found stained with blood, the same type as the girls. And yet they were released, and nobody understands why. The shaman still lives in the area and is granted an interview. To avoid conflict, the village elder and the local policemen are present. But I don't think he's going to like it when we, with the camera and he might not like it. No. He's not here. This is this is his home. Sam. And this is the place. This is. This is uh, Probably the shrine on your left. This one. Mm. Mm. Can we take a look? So you find the, that is a cloth that is used to bury people in Uganda. So they use it only for burial purposes. Yeah. And these are all sharp objects. For what purposes? Uh, a lot of places of these is where most of the children are sacrificed. And anyone who says they will call themselves traditional herbalists, but you don't see any herbalists. 
The shaman is not there. According to a child at the scene, he has fled. However, there are three women. Firstly, they tell us they are neighbors. Then eventually, they simply say they know nothing. The village head is still stunned that the medicine man was released by the police. The villagers were also warned that no one was to hurt the witch doctor under threat of arrest. Because of corruption, he thinks that there was there may be a, a bit of bribing somewhere to make sure that these people were released. Uh, in some cases, the families have told us some of the police have been bribed to hide evidence. Uh, and we can't rule out that. Uh, the people, the families themselves tell us that they don't trust police. Hello, sir. We hear several stories about uh, police officers that get paid. And, and that's the reason some witch doctors go free. Do you recognize those stories? Yeah, to some, some extent. Uh, we have that weakness because of a number of factors. Uh, but uh, the level of uh, corruption in police today cannot be compared to what it was two or five years back. It is notable that suspects against whom there is apparently a great deal of evidence have not been jailed. Peter tells me that corruption alone is not responsible. Many suspects have disappeared, skipped bail, while the lawsuit dragged on for years. Caroline Nolongo no longer believes in justice. She was mother of twins until one was murdered. The perpetrator was known, but the reasons for their release remain a mystery. Following her husband's departure, Simple farm work was not providing enough for her to raise her five children. So her twins were living with a friend. Her friend then gave one of her daughters to a shaman. They made cuts in the top of her head and then cut out her tongue and cut a leg off and an arm. And she cut her heart out. That's what they took. A really difficult question. Um, does she blame herself for trusting that friend? I would not have put her in my friend's care. It happened because I had no support. I buried her. And now I just continue. The was Faith in supernatural forces is widespread. Traditional healers and witch doctors or medicine men, found mainly in rural areas, command much respect. This is the home and workplace of a traditional healer, working in a remote village. I also wanted something that would bring luck. Do you see what I do? I'm going to stop them all. 
is a culture. Why it cannot go away? Because it is hiding itself in the culture. Paul Langayapa worked for two years as a shaman. He claims that it's all one big show in order to make money. Yet people believe passionately in the traditional healers and medicine men. And there are those who believe that child sacrifice leads to happiness and wealth. If you had come to my shrine, I've switched off the light. Here you can say, hey, my son, you sit there. <laughs> he doesn't want to sit. Father, he doesn't want to sit. Hey, how can he hear me? You understand? Hey, why doesn't he want to sit? You see, someone believes that it is the true. people believe that? Oh, a lot. And they dish a lot of money in the shrine. <laughs> Kasha is two and a half and is suffering from a stomachache. His mother has brought him to a traditional healer. Why don't you go to the hospital or to a doctor? But I think the child needs medicine. Would you ever hurt this child in order to get it better? Sure. No. There's, the child will not be hurt in any way. And what do you think of traditional healers or witch doctors that hurt children in order to cure them or whatever reason? So our people do their job well. Do you understand? They have, they have divided. There's a really thin line between witchcraft and traditional healing. It's all about rituals and smoke, etc. And you said to me it's in the culture. But if it's so common, this traditional healing with all those rituals, then it must be very difficult to ban out witchcraft it and the risk of child sacrifice. Yes, it is very difficult. First of all, even no. the government people are believing in it, the, the one who would ban it, so it's like it's very hard to burn it out. And according to Paul, there is ultimately only one way to stop child sacrifice. We tell the public that what you are doing is not right. And to be honest, there is nothing that comes out of killing a child. It is impossible to determine how many children are being killed as sacrifices. But everyone is aware of the problem. Forensic pathologist Sylvester Onzivua works in the Malago Hospital in Kampala. But what do you think of all those child sacrifices in Uganda? Yeah, it's a big, big problem. If you want your factory to be productive, to make money, then you must sacrifice a child or a human being and uh, so it will, be, it will be okay. They believe children are innocent, so the, the requirements of the, of the witch doctors or whatever are that you need to get a pure sacrifice. Okay, can we go inside? Yes, please. This is the police mortuary. So this is the place where children come when yeah. there was a sacrifice? Yes, those bodies of the children who have been sacrificed ideally would come here. Uh, we have this case of the child who was cut, slaughtered, the, the head was taken away from the rest of the body, the penis was cut away and given to the businessman. And how old was the child? I think about 12 years. It's done in secret. It's not done openly. So it's very hard to catch the killer. It's very hard to catch the killers, true. When the child will disappear, it may take months before this is discovered, if, it's, if at all it is discovered. There are many families that have 
missing children. So we always suspect that these children have been taken for ritual purposes. This is, this is a case of a 28-year-old person. So not only children? Yeah, whose head, penis and testicles have been cut off. This is most likely a case of, mad, of ritual murder. This is really res recent? Today! It's this widespread culture of child sacrifice which is to blame for the experiences of Alan in his village in the interior of Uganda. Alan's miraculous recovery after two weeks in a coma mean he's a rare first-hand witness to the most terrifying practices of the shaman. Hello. Here. Here. This was the first push. When I tried to run away, they attacked me. There were other bushes where I found my fruit. In the bush, they cut me in the neck. I asked them to stop. They cut me in the head. Then I passed out and I felt nothing. Suddenly, Alan cuts off the interview and runs away fast to his family. What is happening? Yeah, I called you very fast because one of the men who kidnapped Alan is right there digging in the garden. The little boy Alan claims that you attacked him and that you cut him with a knife. That is not true. But don't you think it's strange that a, a little boy whose head is smashed in and is castrated and all bad things happen to him, he said, you were one of the attackers. And the only thing you say is he's lying. We went to court. And the, the, court the, the, the case is still in court. Yeah. What do you think of child sacrifice? That somebody hurt a child so bad that he almost dies and is castrated now? I don't feel it is good. Because I also have children. If it is mine that was kidnapped, do you think I feel good about it? And you are very certain that you never touched Alan? I have never touched him. He says, I'm not going to say anything more. Yeah. Okay. Anything else is in, 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 in court. Let's wait for that. Okay. They stabbed him in the neck, pretty much to cut off the throat, and cut him off and castrated him. Their aim was to kill him and kill evidence because he knew him. But and they left him for dead. They left him for dead. He's a miracle. He's alive. And, um, and even though he testifies against this guy, he's working in the field. Yeah, he's working in the field and free. Was this one of the men who attacked you? Yes. Yes? This man? Yes. You were very sure? Yes. I do not even want to look at him. He's evil. I feel rotten. Alan recognizes the perpetrators, but they are free for years on bail. The police response is not entirely convincing. Uh, for us, we think that uh, the law is weak, that some of these cases, really, people don't need to, to have the, that freedom that he just appears in court and then he's, he's given bail and the guy goes and moves free. Because so if, they, even though in that, they continue actually doing the same thing. The trial of suspects remains a major problem in Uganda. Corruption, missing evidence, false eyewitness statements, and, in many cases, suspects on bail living at home for years. According to Peter, there are only a few medicine men and a single businessman that have been successfully convicted serving time in prison. His organization is dedicated to bringing the perpetrators to justice and to convince the population that child sacrifice must stop. So this is the place you live? Yeah, this is where I live. This is my home. So this is a um, closed area? Yeah, this is a uh, safe area, uh, 
uh, for me to leave because I've had a lot of threats myself. Threats? Yeah, from witch doctors. And also, uh, George is also safe here as well. <laughs> Peter has adopted You're little George. <laughs> when George was three years old, he was taken by a neighbor yeah. who castrated him. Hello, George. The parents of George asked Peter hey, to adopt him, nice to meet you. partly because of his medical expenses and How education. Hi, but mainly because George is terrified of the area where you? his parents live. Yeah? Peter has arranged plastic surgery for George because a previous botched operation has resulted in more scars. He's very friendly. <laughs> You're a very friendly guy. Oh, you want to sit with me? How, um, what, what happened to George? Because I see uh, a, a big scar on his arm. Uh, this was a skin graft, which didn't go well. It, it went bad. It, um, they used got an this? infection, so they used this to to create uh, the penis. The body man came to take me and The bad man came and he took you in the bush. And then what happened? He cut, he cut me. George, we're going to make a milkshake. No ice cream, but we're going to... There's no ice cream, apparently, but we're just going to try out on the what milk <laughs> and see. <laughs> That's how it comes out without ice cream. <laughs> Test and see, is it nice? <laughs> <laughs> Like, look, look, it's nice. Mm. I get the feeling that you are really on a mission to stop this evil. Yeah, that is, that the is long what drives term, you. The long term, yeah. And even if it's one child saved, it is worth it. For me, I know that George has a long term effect, but I know that he has a better life and he's been saved from death. If he hadn't gotten the surgery, if he doesn't get a hug, he would be dead by now. <laughs> <laughs> the root of child sacrifice is witchcraft. You can't detach it from witchcraft. Uh, the root of, um, of many different women being raped here in, witch, in, in, witch, in, in shrines and people that believe in witchcraft, there are so many. And if the country doesn't have a tiger reaction to that, then it is leaving uh, its people and its children to die.